talked about our stories, one of them being handling and how the, how the car has to sit on this track to be fast. We've seen that play out. Here comes Buell. Buell coming for second place. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Gets way high. Can he keep it away from the wall? Oh, nice piece of saving. Both got the big rear end wiggle there, and I think that that upset Buell's balance for sure. Now you see Buell just ahead from Tony Stewart, and of course, uh, just ahead of him is Billy Bone. So Stewart sits in fourth, and he has first, second, and third lined up, ending now on the fuel strategy. Talk about rising stars. Here's Kenny Bright. One win to his credit, looking for it. Billy Bone, he's sitting there, looking for the opportunity to come into the lead and take the win. So the, the old masters seem for the moment to have the front of the field with Davey Hamilton, the only one in the top five who has not yet won. Tony Stewart sitting right there and closing in. Now, we do expect a stop. You see that Stewart got a round boat, and we do expect a stop from Hamilton any time now. So as we come to the closing laps, we're very close to the final 10 laps of this run of 200 miles. And the former leader, Davey Hamilton, comes out of fifth place and into the pits. The old chasing Brett now. Well, remember, the problem has continually been the handling on the cars. We look at Davey Hamilton. It just wouldn't turn. So Hamilton has to come in. He'll have to take on some fuel that could benefit him later on. And just that quick, fuel got passed for the lead at Sam Schmidt's car up high that he's coming under. He comes around and takes the lead away from Kenny Breck. But again, I ask the question, is he being sent out by the Menard team to try and draw other cars into battling with him and therefore use up fuel? That's definitely a good strategy, Paul, but I gotta tell you something. I think Fuel's in his own world right now, and he's just having at it as hard as he can. He wants to win this race. Guys, you gotta remember. We're gonna look at that pass of the lead again, just so you can see it. There is Buell as he comes fast and takes over the lead. Jack Aroot. Yeah, I was gonna say, you gotta remember that Robbie Buell is coming off of a several week layoff. He didn't run in a couple of events when Menard decided to only run one car. For Robbie Buell right now, this is a chance to prove that he should be considered one of the top drivers in the IRL. Whether that means running full time next year for Team Menard or maybe going somewhere else. There's no team orders here right now, guys. When he snatched the lead away from Kenny Breck, he became the sixth different leader of the race, Robbie Buell. 167 miles an hour, last lap around with just eight laps to go now. Well, I gotta tell you, Buell's lap speeds right now are just flying. I mean, he's in the class by himself. 168 mile an hour right now at this stage, the latter stage of the race, he's flying. John Beacon. Well, let's talk about Robbie Buell and the fuel situation. I just spoke with John Menard, and he said they were probably gonna take a risk and try and make it to the end. I asked, what about Tony Stewart? They said, well, right now, Robbie Buell is in better fuel shape than Tony Stewart. Tony has to conserve. We may roll the dice with Robbie Buell and try and get to the end. Isn't that interesting? Because Buell played a very conservative early and mid race. Now we're to the end game, and he apparently has more fuel on board while Stewart was up there battling for the lead. And that kind of shows you the difference in personalities between those two drivers. One, very aggressive, go get him, get the win at any cost. That's Stewart. And then Robbie Buell, who's very, very cautious. And the car is right. He'll keep it under him and just keep that lead in sight. Kind of reminds you of Rick Mears. No question about it. He drove a real heady race today. He's driving a heady race. Right now he's on fire. He's running, running, getting everything out of the car that he can. And uh, he's, he's doing an awesome race out there. Five to go now. Buell the leader. You got a glimpse of Kenny Breck a moment ago. We'll look for him again. He runs five seconds behind the leader. Tony Stewart is seven seconds behind the leader. And there's some indication now that they are going to pit Tony Stewart. And look at this. Buell comes into the pits. Whoa, what a surprise this is. The So Buell, the leader of the race, comes into the pits, asks for a turn on the front half turn to try and get the handling, try and button the front end down a bit, I suppose, but that gives Kenny Breck the lead of the race in the closing laps here now. 196 complete. And look here. Look here, Tony Stewart is on the pit road as well. Both Menard cars come into the pits. Kenny Breck still the leader. And of course, all he's going to do is get a quick splash of fuel. Both the Menard cars decided they could not make it. They tried, but the car sputtered. Now Tony Stewart's back underway. And of course, the 
question will be, can Kenny Brick make it? He last stopped along with Billy Boat on the 119th lap. And Paul, maybe we can't answer that, but I'll tell you what the transmission was just now. Go to fifth gear, go to fifth gear. Please oh, look at this. Secure. Billy Booth currently slowing on the backstretch. That answers that question. And so now you got to ask what's going to happen with the leader of the race, Kenny Breck. White flag comes out. Car 14, turn five. Oh, they've stretched this all the way. We better make sure we know who second, third, Car and fourth 14, is. Turn two. Right it's now, he crossed the line with 10 seconds ahead of everybody else. Turn three. Kenny Breck. Power team car. And he turns for the line. Dual checkered flags from Brian Howard. Here's second place. That's Larry Curry talking to Tony Stewart. All pit decks, stay with your car that you're assigned to. And of course, A.J. Foyt, absolutely ecstatic, but yet he's sitting here in a green timing stand, and right over our shoulder, you can see what happens with the team. You can see that Billy Boat is climbing out of his car, but yet the other team members for the power team for Kenny Breck are jumping all over the place, running down to victory lane. Right now, A.J. is happy, but it's sorry sight, certainly for both. A.J., that was amazing. One car out of fuel. gear and turn in, and I totally went around this coast. I knew it was close to both cards, but I was going to gamble. Well, at least one of the gambles paid off. Congratulations. Yeah. yeah, he split them, and it paid off for one of them. Interesting, though, two cars stop on the same lap. One makes it, one doesn't. So the driver does, in fact, really make the difference. So A.J. Voigt, who's had some surgery on his knee, that's why he's using the crutches, climbs somewhat painfully over the wall, though I imagine he'll scoot right down as Kenny Breck comes into the winner's circle. Now, with this winner's circle interview from Pet Boys, here's Jack Aroon. Well, Kenny Breck has a smile that actually exceeds the, in the full face helmet here. A lot of paraphernalia get out. <laughs> That's Tommy LaManche, the uh, team manager for the power team. And don't forget, this is the second win for Kenny Breck, having scored a victory under the lights at Charlotte Motor Speedway. They're going to try and get this black thing here is his water cooler that he carries on board. A lot of paraphernalia here. Kenny Breck is the type of driver that told me before the start of the weekend's activities he has learned so much from A.J. Foyt because A.J. is a former driver and he said some people forget that fact. Kenny, if we can get the helmet off real quick, we want to get a chat with you about what has to be one of the best Colorado fuel consumption situations we have ever seen. Kenny? He did say, just as he's admitting, that he ran out on turn three. Turn four, you were out of fuel with the clutch fully depressed. Yeah, uh, I got to thank AJ and the power team and everyone. Matthew McCartan, thank you very much. And KJ Kenya is good here. It's good to have this victory. It feels really good. When they started the race, as we look at AJ Foyt coming towards victory circle, he can't run over here because he's had his knee worked on. But when you started the race, were you in a fuel consumption situation, or did A.J. and the team give you a green light all the way? Uh, we started a race quite conservative. I think I told you after qualifying that I, I care more about this than being first in qualifying, and uh, we're, we really had it hooked up, and uh, I was in sixth gear for most of the time. Um, I was actually conserving fuel when Buell overtook me, uh, but I knew that I didn't think they could go to this. But what I, kind of discipline does it take for a driver to let another guy go by him in that situation? You have to have a, I, one eye in the mirror, see where the others are, how fast they're going, controlling the speed, and you do what you can. Uh, again, I got to thank AJ and the whole crew and power team. Great. Unbelievable. Two wins. How many more can you get before the end of the season? Three. Hey, Paul, <laughs> he's pretty definite about that. He knows what's left, doesn't he? As a matter of fact, he moves uh, quite a bit in the points. From fifth to third, he jumps forward. And Robbie Buell and the gang, uh, Tony Stewart, they're all down there talking over the race uh, that they have just completed. They decide in the Menard camp to bring their cars in at the end of the run. And that turns the race over to Kenny Breck. And in doing that, as we look at the Coors Light race summary, at the conclusion of the race, 
Kenny Breck takes the win at a record 133.515 miles an hour with six different leaders. We'll be back.